the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and raised with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom comes everything that is upright and true, Accept our thanks for the gifts of heart and mind thou didst bestow upon thy servant Elizabeth, and which she showed forth among us in her words and deeds. Deal graciously, we pray thee, with those who mourn, especially the members of the royal family, that casting every care on thee, they may know the consolation of thy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the Hebrew Scriptures, taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. <clears throat> At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert towards my poor people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. It is Now it is I who speak in judgment against them. For my people are foolish, they do not know me. They are stupid children, they have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth, and lo, it was waste and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, and yet I will make, not make a full end. Because of this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. Hear the wisdom of the Hebrew Scriptures. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Every one has proved faithless, all alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord? See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. God of wisdom and love, without you neither truth nor holiness can survive. Show your mighty presence among us and make us glad in proclaiming your deliverance in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Christian writings taken from the first letter to Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me for I found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. What woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Which one of you would not go and look for the one and leave the 99 in the wilderness? Well, the short answer is, None. A shepherd who left the 99 to go looking after the one would come back and find that the 99 were gone, and so was his job. That's just not a thing. So Jesus obviously is doing what he normally does in telling parables and setting in there a twist that is designed to make his audience think about what he's trying to say. A twist that subverts expectations. And I think it's also really important to note that the language that's used for the sheep that wanders off is one who is deceived or led astray. And while I may believe that a sheep could be led astray or deceived, I don't believe that there's ever been a documented case of a sheep who has truly repented, who has truly confessed, who has truly changed their life. This is something that obviously sheep don't do. And with the coins, coins don't get deceived. Coins don't wander off. They're not led astray. And they don't lose themselves. Coins are lost. They are not something which, as an inanimate object, just wanders off on their own. 
Now I may put a slight caveat in here when it comes to my keys, but outside of that, inanimate objects just don't lose themselves. Neither do they find themselves. And if I held a party every single time that I found my keys, I don't think my neighbors would appreciate that. But I think this idea of celebrating when the one sheep is restored to the 99 or the one coin is restored to the other nine in order to return to there being 10 does say something about the importance of completeness. That what is being celebrated is not that some, but all are together. Not that some, but all are in safety. That not one has been lost. And I think what Jesus is saying is that God's interest is not in saving some, not in seeing that some have the opportunity to be saved, not in saving those who had no need of being saved, but rather that God's love and mercy and forgiveness and grace is something that God extends not just to the some, but to the all. And as someone who has frequently found themselves in the category of the one who's been led astray as the one who has been forgotten, as the one who has felt apart from the group. There is incredible comfort in hearing about God's concern God's love, God's intention that none might be left behind, that none might be lost, that all might be saved. And I think that's how we should hear what Jesus is saying here, that God's love is for all, for all of us, for all that we know to be worthy, for all we may feel or not, for those who are led astray, who are lost, who are left behind. God comes, God cares. God saves. Thanks be to God. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus does not avoid the company of sinners, but befriends them. Let us pray to the God who longs for all to be rescued. Heavenly Father, thank you for our Bishop Todd, for those who serve as priests and deacons, and all who are called to the different ministries in the Church. We pray for Anne, our Metropolitan, Linda, our Primate, Jane, our Archdeacon, Sam, our Archdeacon, Raymond, our Rector, our wardens, parish council, and all parish ministries. We pray for our brothers and sisters at Canon Davis Memorial, St. Paul's Point Edward, St. John the Baptist, Walpole Island, St. Anne's, St. George's, and St. James Westminster in London, and for our companion diocese of Amazonia in Brazil. God, our shepherd, all our needs are known to you. Thank you for all peace initiatives and every genuine attempt at negotiation in conflict resolution. May those who govern be governed by your love. May those who lead be led by your directing. May the whole world come to know its need of you. God, our shepherd, all our needs are known to you. Thank you, Lord God, for our families and friends those we meet each day, and those we seldom see. Draw all our loved ones closer to you and search out those whose faith is fragile or fragmented. Today, in our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Dorothy Barnes, Mark Barnes, Ruby Bart, and their families. God, our shepherd, all our needs are known to you. Heavenly Father, as we recall the needs of those who are sad or lonely, lost, or afraid of what they have become, we pray for the knowledge of your love to wrap warmly around them and your living presence to bring them to a place of safety and hope. We pray for those whom we know that have special need to feel your healing touch in their lives and whose names we speak now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God, our shepherd, all our needs are known to you. Have mercy, Lord our God, on those who have recently died. May they enjoy the eternal life of heaven, where there is no more pain, sorrow, 
or weariness, and every tear shall be wiped away. God, our shepherd, all our needs are known to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your long-suffering patience with us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us praise our Savior taught us. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.